I've had a lot of people recently ask me what my thoughts are on high efficiency furnaces. So I wanted to take a moment today and talk to you about the three reasons why I personally feel like a high efficiency furnace is not cost effective over a standard efficiency furnace. Reason number one is the upfront cost. That's probably the biggest thing that people are wondering about. When you get a bid from an HVAC contractor, typically they'll give you two to three bids, one with your standard efficiency furnace or AC system, and it will go all the way up to a high efficiency furnace. Now, the price range could be between three and $4,000 difference. Now, I know here in Salt Lake City, it could be anywhere from 3,000 to a standard efficiency furnace to upwards of $7,000 for a high efficiency furnace. Now, what they'll do is they'll say, um, we have financing, it's worth it, it'll save you this much, and you only have to pay this much per month. Now, if you took that standard $3,000 furnace versus the $7,000 high efficiency furnace, in that scenario, it would take you 15 years for the efficiency to pay off the price difference. This can be found on searsavings.com. As you can see here on the left, you can go to the efficiency level that your furnace is, and then the efficiency level on the right side as well, and it will calculate how many percentage increase in efficiency you can expect. So by the time that furnace saved the amount of money that you spent up front, it would be well out of warranty and it would not be worth it. Now that brings us to number two, the price difference of components in a standard efficiency furnace versus a high efficiency furnace is huge. Let's take for example, an inducer motor. That's a very common component. It takes the exhaust fumes and it puts it out the exterior of your home. If that inducer motor goes bad on an 80% furnace, you're looking at about two to $300 for that inducer motor, depending on who you have do it plus the labor. Now with a high efficiency furnace, that inducer motor could be upwards of $1,500. So the price savings of the efficiency level is negated by having to pay for expensive parts. Now let's take another component of the high efficiency furnace, and that's the heat exchanger. Now with a standard efficiency furnace, you have one heat exchanger, but with a high efficiency furnace, you have two heat exchangers. So even if that unit is under warranty and the heat exchanger goes bad, you now have two potential heat exchangers that you need to replace. And even if that component is under warranty, you're still having to pay more labor to have it replaced. I'm a pretty simple guy and I like things that are simple and basic and there's just less moving components. That brings us to point number three, and that's that high efficiency furnaces do not last as long as a standard efficiency furnace. I have seen so many furnaces that are from the 50s that I have just recently replaced. The same cannot be said for high efficiency furnaces. If you think for a moment about an old 50s model furnace, there wasn't even an inducer motor to pull the fumes out. Literally, gravity would just draw the exhaust fumes out and that eliminated the need to have an inducer motor. So there was nothing to replace. So a high efficiency furnace will have basically double the amount of parts as a standard efficiency furnace and that's just going to be um, more potential for having problems. Now I can speak from experience in saying that a lot of the calls that I get are with high efficiency furnaces. And that says a lot when you're thinking about going high efficiency versus standard. How many times do you want a technician to have to come and look at your furnace, even if it is under warranty? That's, it's, it's a hassle, just the same as with a car. You buy a brand new car, and uh, it's not a guarantee that it's gonna be a great car. It could spend more of its time in the shop than you enjoying driving it. So the same goes with a furnace. Don't automatically assume that the highest price tag one is going to be the best option. I've seen a lot of high efficiency furnaces um, with the condensate water where it didn't wanna drain right and you end up with water issues. It was shutting the furnace off because of, uh, it, it wasn't able to drain the water properly. That's just something that's avoidable when you go with a standard efficiency furnace. There's just less components and everything works a lot easier. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about why you're thinking about replacing your system. Are you thinking about replacing it simply to upgrade the system 
or are you having an issue? Have you had a technician tell you that the heat exchanger is cracked? That's probably the most common reason why people replace their system. Now, I wanna give you a word of caution here. Um, there's a lot of people who are trying to take advantage when it comes to the HVAC industry. Now, it hurts my heart a little bit, but it's the sad truth. Uh, people will try and take advantage of a customer in a heartbeat. If someone tries to tell you that your heat exchanger is cracked, have them show you where that crack is on your heat exchanger and even get another opinion. Have another company out and look at it. Don't automatically assume that this company is telling you the truth. Now, if you're simply wanting to upgrade my recommendation and what I will do if my 80% furnace uh, goes bad is I'm totally going to replace it with an 80% furnace. I have zero interest myself in getting a high efficiency furnace for the reasons that I just stated but you do what you wanna do. Well, folks, those are the three reasons why I feel like you should not buy a high efficiency furnace. Take my words with a grain of salt. Now, if you're interested in seeing for sure whether or not your heat exchanger is cracked, check out this video, and I'm gonna show you some tips on how to check and see if your heat exchanger is cracked or if they're just feeding you garbage. Later.